Thank you. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, October 15th, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Now with 20% more soap for families. All right. <laughs> have any idea what he's talking about, but. Uh, and our guest today is Jed Pirate Higgs. Welcome from Western Canada. Arr. Arr. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, Pastafarianism, gods, yeah. holy books, and superstition. And if you think you're the only non believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Well, bet what's our topic today? God-free zones. And where are they, and what would they look like? Why is it valuable? We'll get into it all. Well, well, we will, we will, we will, but guys, let's slow down a little bit. There's still... The matter of a bit of round of pasta that we need to dish out before we get into uh, potatoes. How about we let it up to our own Dread Power Higgs for a serving of noodles? All right. Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, how Dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs and the sauces and the grog, whenever and ever. Raw man. I know the holy hand grenade. I know. I know it's not. I know it's not the same thing as pasta. But recently, I discovered like granola that you can put into yogurt and and have like a really amazing sort of like breakfast parfait. And I think the uh, weird thing for me is just the carb explosion, since I haven't eaten eating a lot of carbs, eating something that's like very uh, starchy has made my brain go like, whoa, I love this so much. It's the best <laughs> thing ever. So uh, if I ever jump into pasta, I'm going to probably have to do like some protein meal uh, flour <laughs> first or some chickpea thing. But yeah, I, get, I can definitely recommend if you have the opportunity to get some, get some carbs in you. It's wonderful. Speaking of which, Dread Pirate Higgs, how have you been since last Not week? Not too bad. Uh, I'm actually on site right now at work. I'm sitting in an oil or natural gas plant Ooh. Uh, outside there doing some construction. So I'm their on-site medic for uh, the next month I'm up here. Very cool. Very cool. Very so you, cool. At, the, you... at this particular site. so You're not yeah. in the middle of the ocean, right? No, no, no. It's on land. Okay. Yeah, okay. up north. Okay. Yeah, Fort St. John. So, um, yeah. So I almost seven days a... a week, 12 hours a day. That's my job. Nice. Well, I'm, I'm, I couldn't imagine anyone better to have up there than you. So <laughs> yeah, continue doing that. There you go. Yeah. I'd also say like my first job was almost at an Exxon oil rig in the middle of the ocean. So, really? Oh, yeah. nice. And I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't take it, but it was sort of like that bright eyed college. I'll take anything I can just to get in the industry sort of thing. And I'm glad right. I, I, I was not selected <laughs> for an opportunity like that. Anyway, Larry, how you been? Oh, well, I, I should, oh. I should mention too, though, that, that I have been accepted for my degree program. So Ooh, very cool. I will be, uh, I'm just waiting for the advisor to come back with, um, you know, sp- sp- the specific course direction that I need to take in order to finish it. And, um, you know, hopefully next week I'll be enrolling in a couple of courses to get that started. So, yeah, congrats. And this is for your teaching, right? You're going to be teaching it, right? <clears throat> no, no, th- that's completely separate. It's, this is actual uh, like university degree because I, ah. I didn't graduate from university with uh, a, a graduate degree. I just, okay. uh, I'm a, yeah. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. Sure. Ooh. Yeah, you that's got a, time. That's a long. That's alongside all the other stuff. Yeah, you got a lot of hobbies. That's yeah. cool. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
wait until you um I'd, I've, I've always loved to forestall the nightmares i have where i don't complete my math classes or homework <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe i should maybe i did my school all wrong i did mine all up front to the point where now i'm kind of traumatized and i'll wake up being like oh i'm done with school i don't do homework <laughs> that's Why right don't I, dreams? I should yeah, have done it do yeah, yeah, yeah me too larry how are you i'm uh, doing well loving this uh fall weather Cool. Larry, you jumped into a game called Starfield, right? I did. I've been playing it quite a bit lately. What was your thoughts on it? Because I'm I'm seeing it get ragdolled on the internet with regard to like reviews and stuff like that. No, People I like it. It's yeah? it's a space version of uh, uh what do you call it? Fallout or mm. um uh, Skyrim, you know, it's by the same company. Oh it's uh it's it's really well done. I, I okay. thoroughly okay. enjoy it. Uh, hey, you can get Starfield? lost in it. Starfield. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's not the that's not the one you were playing before where no, we were no. playing there together. No. Uh, yeah, I haven't cool. played that in quite a while now. But you, uh, no, Starfield, uh, long, big, uh, huge area to play in. Always something nice. to discover. And it's a single right player on. game, so it's not multiplayer. Did, right. I'm wondering, okay. did you finish the game? Me? Yeah. Um, that would be uh, kind of giving away the ending, but I guess it's it's common knowledge now. They have an end game plus. Yes. And what it is is once you get to the end of the game, you can then either continue exploring the universe because you you can't discover it all at you know the hours that it takes you to complete it, uh, or you can jump to a parallel universe and start over, right? Carrying forward all the skills that you have, mm. but nothing else. Mm. <laughs> I was wondering, through your vast expanse exploration of space, did you find any gaps? You know, God-free zones. Have you found, did you find anything like that? Um, <laughs> well, if you're talking about secular <laughs> zones, yeah, lots of them. Oh, you did? Uh, really? That's sure. awesome. Okay, okay, okay. I know in the game there's like a religion, in fact, uh, like one that's specific for space, yeah. and then there's other. It's a snake insects. god. Okay, okay, okay. Serpent, the serpent god. The reason why I brought up gaps and God free zones is I was thinking today about how useful it would be to know where God is not. And the reason why I bring that mm -hmm. up is we put a lot of focus on where's your proof for God? Where's your proof uh, for this omnipotent, omnipresent being? Where's your proof? I want to I want to see evidence of them existing. I want to see them here. I want to be able to test them. How about the inverse? Right. Give me a God free zone. Because if we have God everywhere, I don't really have a frame of reference to know what an area that doesn't have God looks like. So when people tell me very confidently that I know God is here and there and there, I'm like, how do you know that? How do you how do you reference that? So Larry, I know I know one. Oh, go children's for it. hospitals. He doesn't seem to be there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> nice. yeah. We well could say done. that, but you know, a, a Christian would just say like, well, it's a test, and there's nothing better than the glory of God. Terminal cancer is a test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I yeah. know it sounds evil, but wait until like we know the spiels. We know the spiels. What we want though is a God-free zone, particularly in areas of sports. I know you brought up child uh, hospitals, but what about if I'm playing a game with darts with friends, and uh, they win, and I see them pray to their god for the win and i'm here like man i'm just a, a poor little atheist with some sharp needles you had a literal superpower being that created the universe helping you win a game of darts against me that's not fair that's not fair what kind <laughs> of life situation is that mm -hmm. a god-free zone would give me the ability to be able to test an area that has no god present or no influence present and i can use that as a frame of reference to look at everywhere else and be like oh if this is what it's like to have a god-free zone then this is what a God zone looks like. And that at least gives me some much more objective reference to understand that maybe there is a fact of God and, and the questions can be better, more informed past that point. That's my value for a God free zone. You yeah. can't test God. How many yeah. times have you heard that? Hey, listen, I don't have to test God. I just have to test the absence of God. You see, mm -hmm. it works. It works. I'm just looking well, for what test God. would that be? That's the problem. I just want to know what parameters what a non God free or God free zone looks like. What is that? How does that work? When I flip a coin, if I pray in that area, does does it is it just as effective as praying in an area where there is a God zone? Like we can come up with pretty good tests if someone said, "Hey, this five ten meter by ten meter square." on this part of the world is a God-free zone or basketball is a God-free zone. And all the people <laughs> who keep praying was like, ah, oh, God help me with that win. It's like, no, he didn't. Basketball is God-free. You just are very mm -hmm. tall and practiced a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Gary, do you see any value? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what uh, you know if 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 physics, yes, and chemistry and uh, and biology all work differently in a God free zone. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Listen, can we yeah. still see evolution in a God free zone? Can we still see right. medicine working? Does it work better? Does it work not at all? And now we have an ability to be like, hey, I'll pray for you to make you feel better. Like, do that in the God free zone. Pray for me to help this disease go away in the God free zone. And we'll see if it's just as effective as you doing it in a God zone. And if it's just as effective, don't do it <laughs> because it's a waste of time, right? right. It's not, it doesn't matter whether God's there or not there. I'm going to get better or I'll keep getting worse sick after the point. So you can save yeah. yourself time. I can save myself time. And I'm not saying that a God doesn't exist. This is the brilliant thing behind this. I'm mm. not saying, hey, I want to prove to you your God doesn't exist. I just want an area that we can test that doesn't have the God there. That way yeah. we can at least say, yeah. hey, that's all I need. I just need the God-free zone to test. What do you think, Larry? Yeah, yeah I'd say just, uh, just, sports yeah, just would probably... Just area off. Larry, what do you go first? And then we'll have dread. Larry, what do you think? Yeah, sports would probably be, a, is either a God-free zone Mm. Or God is the finny, finickiest person in the universe because one really day the it's Patriots. this team, next day it's that team. You know, he's sure, all over sure, the place. Sure. It seems like God always loves the team that has the most money. Isn't that weird? Isn't that like yeah. really or bizarre? the best training or the best yeah, coach? Which you can get with the most money. <laughs> it just seems so bizarre. Yeah, yeah. It's so bizarre. Uh, uh, Dread, what do you think? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, you know, there's got to be areas you can just rope off, right? Right. And I don't think it would be necessarily, how do I put this? Blasphemous? You you let me know. You guys let me know. All I'm saying is it would be nice to have a privacy room. <laughs> Maybe yeah, not yeah. big enough for us to like cause any harm. I'm not talking about an entire city where it's just like, this is the godless city. And, and whatever happens here stays here. It's like, I'm not asking for that. I'm just saying like a tiny, you know, foot by foot square volume straight up into the universe just like a very 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 small volume compared to the vastness of the outer space or at least just an area that if you stand in it god's not paying attention you can be right here you can <laughs> think whatever thoughts you want test it out here's your frame of reference right and now when you step out do you feel bad do you feel terrible do you feel scared now step out of the square oh do you feel love do you feel like the holy spirit sees you recognizes you and recognizes your love as with uh, as a part of a holy trinity no perfect now you know now you know by stepping here and stepping out what it feels like to have god in your life and i think what could be a better way to get all the atheists on board with at least understanding that a god exists without having to show that you exist you could just show an area where you don't exist I think it's the perfect system. What do you think, Larry? Well, since he never shows up and tells us, and we only have to go with what the God believers tell us, mm -hmm. one of the most concentrated zones where God would be all the time, every day, all, you know, concerned with everything would be the bedroom. That's apparently the God headquarters, you know, <laughs> where he's the strongest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It seems weird. It seems like he has a lot of interest in bedrooms and uh, uh, what's inside your brain, but not so much like just giving us an ability to be able to demonstrate uh, uh, a frame of reference of what it looks like when he's not present. And if I had that, I'd be way more confident for when I get a feeling in my heart or if a team wins or if I get miraculously cured that it was God that was helping me out. If I knew what it was like, without god's influence and i and i think some christians might be listening to this and thinking like that makes no sense whatsoever i always i always have this analogy where it's if i don't know what something that's not a spoon is right if i don't know what a reference of something that's not a spoon but i'm very confident that every utensil in my kitchen drawer is a spoon i could pull out a spoon and be like this is a spoon pull out another spoon and be like this is a spoon Pull out a knife and be like, this is also a spoon. Very confident this is also a spoon. Pull out a fork. This is also a spoon because I don't know my frame of reference. I'm just confident that everything is spoons. And in the same way, a Christian is confident yeah. that everything around them is a creation from God. And they're pointing at the rocks. They're pointing at my watch. They're pointing at uh, uh, Pakistan. They're pointing at uh, Look at the everything. trees. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, Close. what's your frame of reference? Do you know what something that's not made by God looks like? Do you have any frame of reference? Because that's how we recognize things, by comparing them to things that they aren't and making that comparison. If we don't have a comparison uh, of what something that's not created by God looks like, how are we justified to make the claim that everything is created by God? In the same way that I can say everything is a spoon in my kitchen drawer, it's a claim, but I can't demonstrate that with any sense of reference. So give me a no God zone. Give me a God free zone. Give me a little square on the ground. Put it in Scotland. I don't care where you put it in. I'll drive. I will travel to wherever the God free zone is. I'll stand in there and I'll be like, oh, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Okay. And then I step out of the square and you could just have a line of atheists. Larry would be right behind me. He'd be He'd be like, I want to check this out. I just want to see what this big fuss about souls is. And then you step in the square and you're like, oh, souls. I get it. And then Larry, you're shaking your head, but you'd be, you totally would be on board. And then you finally get like, <laughs> Oh, definitely. If there was some way to test, to make. test for a God, hell yeah, I'd go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check it out. Like, oh man. I have to make so many apologies. You'd have to make 10 years worth of apologies by now. That'd be the craziest. <laughs> All right. So uh, final thoughts on God free zones, guys, uh, Larry, I'll throw it up to you. What do you think? Value, good idea, bad idea. Should we start praying for it? Well, no, any kind of test, I think, for a God would be good. But even mm. if you had a test for a God and it true. tested positive instead of mm. false, true, mm. false, we still don't know which God. I mean, there are 30,000 mm. religions yeah. on this planet. And who knows? Yeah. Uh, you know, it was maybe a God that doesn't have a representative religion on this planet. You know, we don't know. But you know, everybody's just going to jump to the fact that, you know, there's a God. Yeah, it's our God. And uh, we're right back where we started. Okay. Okay. How about this though? Um, my, my, my setup would be there wouldn't. Man. Sorry. Oh, go for it. Go for it, it. it just occurred it. to me. And that still doesn't answer the question about whether there's an afterlife. I hear that. I also hear that no, too. That's for sure. My, my main concern would be uh, if we had a God free zone and a non God free zone, maybe we could set it up in a way where we could expand explain which god we're talking about even if it was to one god that could be a good test to just verify if that one god exists or not and then maybe it's some other guys that we're talking about but maybe a specific mm -hmm. no go zone no god zone for one particular god and we put up the headquarters of each of the like allah could be in islamabad and uh the pope vatican could be the catholic god and somewhere in utah could be the mormon version etc you could just have the no goods no god zones there and a person can visit all of them and figure out through some very cute analytical testing which one was the most valued or uh, viable uh experience or not but what i'm really more concerned about is worship because let's say we nailed it down to one god and we actually were able to confirm that the no god zone or the god free zone versus the god zone was impacted by the presence of a supernatural being that we can test at this square and we know for a fact that that god does exist a god that does, does not mean that i would worship that god it just right. means that i know that that god exists and i think that's the big distinction that yeah, i don't think we should have. worship anything worship is a, a horrible concept right i as an atheist would no longer be an atheist but i would not be a follower automatically of a god that commands right. me to worship him right uh unless if mm. he was like i wish you rather shouldn't and maybe offer some you know pasta on the weekends i'd be like <laughs> okay maybe yeah. maybe there's something better here but i'm still not worshiping even that god but i would at least like say hey yeah. this is a this is a better you could follow him uh, yeah, as long I'd as you prove worthy you know. <laughs> i'd follow the twitter account <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah. are you a follower of the of this guy? I was like, well, I'm on Twitter, but that's basically it. Like, for the most part, yeah, <laughs> he's, he or she has my ear, and that's mm -hmm. basically it. Uh, Dread, do you think that's fair? Would you say that you would uh, be prone to worship, say, for example, the Flying Spaghetti Monster, if you knew for a fact that that god was uh, able to be tested in terms of its presence? I wouldn't. No, and I agree with Larry. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be inclined to worship any god. Hmm. um but to celebrate to celebrate the god i i'd be up for that which i okay. do yes and which is you know the pastorian thing we celebrate we celebrate it we don't worship yeah. it and it doesn't require worship it nice. doesn't require sacrifice it doesn't require uh you know you know stretching out and praying and five daily prayers or uh 
uh, any other kind of silly thing. Yeah. You and, know, and just uh, finding out that there's a God or not doesn't answer any of the questions. You know, why does, no, it why, does, does why does it, why yeah. would he allow uh, children's cancer? You know, why does he allow volcanoes yeah. to or kill thousands of people? Why would he create it in the first place? Or COVID. Yeah. You, know? mm, mm. you guys are running into another topic that I'd love to talk about then. How about this? Um, the idea that you have so many questions from your creations, right? I make pipe cleaner animals. Uh, I do it as a way to like keep my hands busy if I'm in a long meeting at work. I got a bunch of pipe cleaners. What is that? A snail? It's a snail. Yeah. I got platypuses. I have birds. I make a little random (laughs) stuff. It's fun to create while you're stuck in a meeting. I can do it even when I'm in class. We have some training classes and stuff like that. But when you're done, you end up with all these cute little toys. And when I'm done, um, the weirdest thing, I never subject any of these cute toys to internal damnation and help. Do you let your cat play with them? I I don't (laughs) let my cat play with them, but he does play with them. He does. So like I'll come into the room and they'll all be strewn across the floor, but you can see uh-huh. they're relatively intact. So like mm-hmm. I mind. Yeah, he plays with them. He knocks them around, but then I just pick them up and I put them back on the shelf again. And then he comes back and that's our game. But uh, the fun thing is because I don't torture them or and a damn them or damn them to internal fires of hell. I always think of myself as a better arts and crafts guy than God. And there's a whole list of things that I do feel like I'm better at than God. Don't mean that in a bad way, but I would definitely say my arts and crafts capability is one of them because I don't punish my creations after I make them and when I or give them cancer when they're kids or make them born with misshaped hearts and have to like deal with pain or or leave them to be prone to abuse, you know, whether mentally or we could go on and on. Yeah, it's a long list. Why can't God be a better? Yes. What is the deal? What could God learn from arts and crafts? Uh, um, Dred, I know you enjoy uh, uh, the occasional crafting project. I've seen some pictures of your floats and stuff like that. What could uh, God learn from a good hands at craftsman? Well, are you there? What's this? I want you to tell me like some tips that cool. God could learn from a good craftsman. <laughs> oh no we're getting a little bit of communication issues yeah yeah no doubt well yeah Go know your it. stuff right stuff. know your oh, stuff right yeah 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 you're fine now you're fine now can you hear me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're fine yeah. now yeah well certainly i mean you think about uh you think about the, the giraffe and and the main artery that goes up its neck and sure. just how uh poorly designed uh that is, it's you know, if God designed all this stuff, He is a rookie. He's hmm. a rookie. He and you know, if He's designing all these different creatures and beings and whatnot, yeah, you think well, all that practice, you get it right. Hmm. Yeah, but a and, lot uh, don't. <clears throat> uh, who was it? The that cosmologist, the guy, the doctor of the uh, the planetarium. Uh, I can't think of his name, but he says, uh, yeah. Tyson. Mike Tyson. Neil deGrasse. My Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's Neil it. Neil deGrasse Tyson. He said, "Why okay. would a God create a, a person whose playground is right next to the waste facility?" <laughs> sure, sure. I'm also thinking, yeah. like, <laughs> as a craftsman, right. one of the best things you can do is plot out your design before you begin. <laughs> right? It's not like jazz. If you're making something that other people are going to have to use, you like plot it out. And the common word we hear, even in engineering, is measure twice, cut once right yes so like you'll you'll get the measurement and you're confident do it again right it's just the yeah. in, you may not literally do that but the idea is make sure everything's your your plan works first then execute the plan right look it over first that's right a design review and so if i'm there at the design perfect review perfect report, example is uh a perfect example of siamese twins right yeah, sure. You know, measure twice, cut once. <laughs> oh, right, <no. laughs> right. Don't leave it to humans to like have to figure that out on the on the back end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, these yeah. Guys. Um, but if I'm there rookie. at the design review table for a giraffe and some, or for uh, uh, a dolphin, and I'm thinking, you know, yeah, I the hole for the hole for breathing is right next to the hole for drinking and eating. 
And if that gets clogged, the can the person not breathe anymore? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's a really good design. I was like, just you already well, made I, the extra I, I like hole Larry's... on these other animals. Just make a breathing hole. <laughs> uh <-huh. Right. laughs> Top of the I like head. Larry. You just <laughs> make them breathe out of her ears. Yeah, you're breaking up something terribly there, Dred. My, my thing hilarious. is we have three oh, holes on is. our you're face back. that we can breathe out of, but they all bottleneck down to the one right. place where we <clears throat> swallow and eat food through. It seems mm -hmm. very, it seems like, hey, come on. Like we could have, you could have figured this out. Like there's a, we could have had these, be, we have two breathing holes, right? For smelling. And then we have mm -hmm. the eating and drinking hole that goes down the same breathing hole. Like, come on. Like we could figure that out. Design oh, yeah. review. We could have optimized that ahead of time and mm -hmm. caught it. We could have measured that twice and, and made one cut and then fixed a lot of problems. How many people have died from choking or think about that? That's yeah. 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 It's um, along with that. I always think of like whenever someone brings up the um, humans are, this is all part of the design. This is all part of the plan. And the reason why it looks bizarre to you is because you're just not as awesome as a God. You know, you don't understand his yeah. complex nature. Lean not on your, your understanding. Right. In other words, don't think. Right. The thing about designing, though, is it's not about making the thing super complicated. It's about making something as simple as possible, which means me and my simple, primitive, mortal brain should be able to understand the creation if it was or the design by if it was designed or uh, creation by design, because cr design, the hallmark of it is simplicity. It's why not engines complexity. have one. It's why cars have one engine or one gas tank. I could put 40 in them, but it if it doesn't make the car operate any better, then why do I have all these extra moving parts? I want to be able to have as simple of a design as possible with a few moving parts as possible, which gives me fewer failure modes as possible. And that overall leads to a better design contraption. But when I look at the world, especially even human bodies, I got two nipples. I don't need nipples. What's going on with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's just a it's, lot. It's a redundant, it's redundancy. Mm, it's a little <laughs> redundant. It's like, I didn't need one. I got two. What's going on? It's like, you can give them to someone else. He doesn't want them either. <laughs> <laughs> we all got too many. All right. Uh, I think we're nearing the, uh, the bottom half of the half hour. Larry, why don't you take us out? Sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPF. I'm here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dowder Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year and have over 1,100 members now. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville City, I'm sorry, Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. You can find us online also at Facebook, meetup.com, or go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist. It'll take you there. Mm. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, start one. one. Start one. That's right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? I had a really good comment from uh, YouTube. This is on our show called <clears> Give <throat> Me Reason. And I'm um, keeping the name. Uh, since it's the actual person's name, I'm going to keep it uh, anonymous for the show. But uh, he says, I've been tuning into this podcast for a while. And I must say this topic. There's a topic of religious accents that I find quite intriguing. As an atheist, I've always been fascinated by the way people from different religious backgrounds often carry their beliefs in their speech and actions. It's interesting to note how our upbringing and surroundings can shape not only our religious beliefs, but also our manner of speaking. And when you grow up in a religious community, it's not just about the doctrines, it's the entire culture and the way of expressing those beliefs. Um, it's a very good point. So like, I think we made the mention on previous shows that people still say bless you, you know, whether they're atheists or not. Um, we may say words like I don't. I know. I know some people don't. I never say it. I say it sometimes because I don't feel like Christians own the word. I and that's just my and and it's it's a. I will say. I say just I say wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it means good health. Yeah, I'll I'll wish people like if someone's yeah. so like 
my family is uh religiously really diverse and so like when my sister who's muslim she celebrates eid i'll i'll wish her eid mubarak because she's muslim um my my mom's just Jehovah witness they don't celebrate holidays but if she has a gathering and it's a good meeting that she has i'll wish her a good meeting my sister's christian um and for the most part i don't have a problem letting them know that i'm an atheist and that i'm wishing them goodwill in in terms that they that they can appreciate because i don't want them to assume that the only people who tell them bless you or the only people who tell them like hey uh uh lord chariot all these other words that are co-opted christian music i was like oh yeah i love mercy me too i want them to know that there are atheists that also like those two that there are atheists that show up at the uh, charity drives that the food center bank packing like i want them to know hey when you look around and you make the assumption that everybody who's with you right now is is the same god wavelength as you that's not the case and i also want you to know what atheism looks like firsthand and not from what your pastor tells you what they look like but from me and so right. like after i let you know i'm an atheist and you sneeze and i say bless you i want you to know that like hey atheists do that too and so like the next person who tells you it on the street second guess whether that's automatically a christian too i feel like there's value in that and it, whether that's my my uh i and the reason why i do that is um it's not so much a religious accent for me but it is something that i was brought up in that was my culture when i was raised i was raised in christianity and when I left it, I understand there's still goodwill behind it. And and if I let if I give people opportunity to know that I'm an atheist, I want them to continue to see that goodwill. Uh, uh, that's that's the nuts and bolts of it. What do you guys think? Is that fair, Larry? Oh, definitely. Um, we need to be able to um, come out of the closet. I mean, there's so many of us who still live uh, closeted atheist lives, and if there's a there's a meme going around the internet that says if we could all come out of the atheist closet we could stop living under fairy tales right and it's so true and the only people that are really talking about atheism uh are the people who don't know anything about it the mm -hmm. preachers you know are talking to their flock about telling them how bad atheists are and that we eat babies and and sin all the time and that we're atheists basically because <laughs> religion hurt you us mean you don't? we we lost our father or something we're mad at god if we were mad at god we would believe in god you right. can't be mad at something you don't believe in that's very true um dread do you think there's value in uh, the message that i bring out or do you think i should curve it back a little bit with regard to saying bless you etc well, it's about training yourself mm -hmm. and training those around you to be more aware of these uh, habits mm -hmm. that they've become accustomed to. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of people and you hear it in movies and TV shows, uh, even amongst atheists, uh, you know, like, oh, my God, or, you know, y y these phraseologies that just are just a matter of habit. And um I try to be much more pur purposeful mm. in, you know, considering what I'm saying when I make exclamations like that. Like I'll say, for Pete's sake, or, you know, something something a little less um, onerous <laughs> or or indic indicative of a, of a of a deity, right? It's just being purposeful and mindful of what you're saying mm. when you're saying those things. I remember... I, I've had conversations with atheists who, who you know, repeatedly in the conversation will say things like, oh, my God, or uh, it's like, sure. listen to what yourself, just listen to what you're saying and and just be mindful of it and, sure. you know, extract it from your vocabulary and you'll and that will become a habit. Just okay. make it a habit a mindfulness of it. I remember I was at my, uh, I was at a job where I was helping um, a lab set up for some testing and I was eating lunch with um, two of my coworkers and they were talking pretty dismissively about atheists in front of me. They didn't know I was an atheist at the time. And they're like, yeah, I can't even believe, you know, uh, atheists get angry when you tell them bless you. Uh, after they sneeze it's like man i'm just saying bless you like you don't have to take it a big deal it's like yeah atheists get so ornery over stuff and i said i'm an atheist and i don't mind if someone says bless you to me and that sh shut down the conversation completely like yeah, the co I conversation <laughs> was no longer about the saying was it <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. at that point it's like yeah. oh okay well 
I never one, I got the impression like none of those people actually had a conversation with someone who was out as an atheist. And two, those people knew me well enough that they like that that stopped the whole this session on atheism when the most part. But it also gave him an idea of what one looks like. And so even if I don't say the words, <clears throat> if he said to me, and I think as you would be mindful of the words you choose, also be mindful of your reactions to them. Because if you are wearing yeah. a flag that says I'm a Pasiferian or I'm an atheist, people are going to take your your reactions and also generalize on, on top of that as well to feed their confirmation bias. So be mindful of your mm -hmm. actions, be mindful I, of your reactions. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say uh, one thing that uh, brought this much more closely to my attention was why we say why people say bless you when someone sneezes sure and it was because it was thought that it was when the the, the devil could come in and possess your soul uh, it, and that's why people said bless you yeah it goes even before that it goes and, even before that so believe it or not when yeah. i when i put when i yeah so when i so when it you know i started pointing this out it's like what are you blessing me for like what, what's going on that I need to be blessed because when I sneeze and well, I don't know, it's just what I was taught to do. And I said, well, this is the background of why we say bless you. And, and, you know, uh, you know, just guy. sort of to educate a little bit. Right. And just to point out, well, maybe you should think about the background for the, some of the things that you say and do, because, you know, like lots of people excuse behaviors by saying, well, that was the way I was raised. And that becomes an excuse for sometimes behaving badly. And, uh, w you know, if we're to be self-actualized, we should be much more mindful of the things we do and why we do them and not just blame it on our past or on our family history or on our culture or on our ethnicity or on our religious background or any of that stuff. Hmm. Be mindful, be self actualized you, know, you can think for your yeah and 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 even when you are and one, you should be mindful in everything that you do, and two, even if you are mindful, you might maintain the same set of actions, but you just have a more yep. informed intentionality behind it. So if I say bless you to a person walking yes, past us, exactly. it's like, exactly. hey, Ty, can I explain to you the history of this? I'd be like, actually, I'd love to have a conversation about it because I already know some parts of the history on this. And we could just have a mindful conversation that's fun and we just move on with the rest of our day. But like the idea is I just want to make sure that you're thinking about the things that you do because it's good to think about the things that you do. It's one yep. of the rare qualities that humans have with this weird outer layer brain that we've got that allows mm -hmm. us to be reflex reflective on how we conduct ourselves yeah we can do that towards the betterment of society yeah. i also want to throw out like uh every culture has a variation of the bless you uh phrase like i know greece rome and spanish culture have like a variation of salute a salute which means like to your health which used to be uh uh a concept for wishing someone health when they showed signs of sickness and then in plague times, they would say, bless you um, as, mm -hmm. like, as a way to like immediately start fighting back the plague because they didn't really understand germ theory well enough back then. And then, of course, you know, Christianity comes and co-ops a lot of stuff. And now it's become, well, when you say bless you, you're specifically referring to our God and that's our brand. And we put a trademark on it and along with words like Lord, even though that was a job description yeah. before Christianity exists, chariots uh salvation shepherding i was like you can't take shepherds like no we're gonna take rainbows okay well we lost rainbows, <laughs> but we're gonna take everything <laughs> we're gonna take anything that's cool in culture and culture put our logo on it and so i yeah. say we're gonna uh, take um, bunny rabbits yeah bunny rabbits. bunny rabbits and everything pine trees it's all ours it's all ours christmas trees of, yeah a lot of these yeah. things existed before in what would be considered heathen or paganistic uh processes but uh, my main thing is you can take them yeah. back and they, they, they call that, that they call that they have them. Yeah. They call it uh, exacting. Ah, I would have called it like manifest destiny of religion. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, thank <laughs> you for that comment. We really appreciate it. That was a really cool discussion. I want to touch a little bit on the flip side 
of religious accents where the idea for me when I was before I like thoroughly read this comment was I thought it would be about how people have accents but they don't think about them because in their mind that's just the way how they they think no one ever really thinks about the particular way how they pronounce words but they don't recognize that that was influenced by their location that they're born in and everyone in as far as who loved them and their authority figures and their entertainment how they spoke to them and they simply adopted it without recognizing it like humans are a sponge when we are brought up and we'll just pick up the mannerisms of people who are around us and we consider them as truth because they're foundational to our upbeing and our upbringing and we do the exact same thing with religion it's not a coincidence that i'm that i used to be a christian because my parents were christian and i grew up in a largely christian nation and it's not a coincidence that people who are muslim oftentimes grow up with muslim parents in muslim dominated areas yeah. It's a matter of geography more than anything else. It's a matter of geography, a matter of who your parents are. And why do we not consider that? Yep. I, I've had conversations with people who are like, well, I've done my personal research and I just came to the conclusion that this is true. It's like, dude, your name is Matt. <laughs> your name came from the Bible. Have you not considered that you are in effect very much steeped in a culture since birth in the particular region that you have you know, consequently retroactively determined it was true with very little information about any other religion around you. Uh, and and if I thought a little bit further, they'd realize that there are not that many Matthews in the Middle East. <laughs> 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 Where the name theoretically originated. Yeah, like if your name is Jesus, if his name is Matt, if your name's Joel, if your name's uh, James, uh, Chris, like you're going to have to consider like think the deck was stacked against you when it came to trying to figure out what is true and what isn't true and in a fairly clear way. And if you are very, very confident that your God's true and you don't want to consider that, then you need to come up with a better argumentation platform because we're still waiting to hear a good argument for why this God exists. And when we're presented again and again with people whose names just come from the Bible saying, well, here are these same things that my pastor told me. It's like, we've already heard those arguments. We already know them when we know it's not justified enough to believe in a supernatural being. And we just see it yet again, another person brought up in a religion with a religious accent, trying to be like, it's the, the trying to be like, my religion is the one true religion. It's the same way as someone with like very thick country accent being like, I think country music's the best country music. I just think it's the best music, <laughs> the platform of all time. I think it's the best music. Like, really, really, you think that? That's why do you think that? That's so entertaining. I, I would, I imagine you have a lot of argumentation to present that. It's just a religious <laughs> accent at the end of the day. Um, I love that accent, man. You did a great yeah, job. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. I've been living here for a while. I've been living. Yeah, here it's like he grew up here or something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to start a fight, you guys. I wanted to talk about conflict real quick, too, before we wrapped up. Um, I did some um, training in uh, Ohio recently uh, about how to resolve conflict across team members at a site that's part of like a leadership development program. And the idea of resolving conflict, um, unlike uh, SE, where it's sort of like you're trying to avoid conflict and you have like a good conversation by avoiding conflicting minefields of ego, right? What do you do when a conflict already has occurred and you need to resolve it, right? What are those tools and what do they look like? And um, I found a very group, good set of conversational tools in order to do it. And it's startling how effective it is because I've already gone back to work and started implementing these tools and resolving some conflicts with both of my team and with other team members that are at our site. And it's been a really, really good practice. Um, one thing that I recognize when I look in the Bible is that there's very little effort on God's part to resolve conflict or conflict mediation. In fact, if, if, I, were to, if I were to be as objectively frank, he instigates conflict at almost every opportunity. He's always there being very ambiguous, picking favorites, uh, setting up people for failure. And I don't understand. I don't understand the premise of why someone could look at a, a God who's willing to go through all these efforts to set people up for failure and cause harm for his own crafts and creations and things that he apparently loves. And yet still call this God a good God. Right. Um, it blows my mind. 
And so maybe I can get some resolution here. Uh, Larry, do you think God is a good conflict resolver uh, aside from killing everybody? <laughs> well, we don't, <laughs> we don't have any examples of God, so it's really hard to say. All yeah. we have is, is holy books. And we know from, from research and mm. scholarly uh, research that those are written by humans. So I'd say there's no way that we could know if a God is a good conflict re resolution. And if you look at the history of religious conflict, I'd say there's not a chance in hell <laughs> that he's a good con <laughs> conflict <laughs> resolution uh, resolver. <laughs> well, look at the uh, look at the Spanish Inquisition. Theoretically, God was in the middle of that. How much right. conflict was there? Right. Four hundred years. Not only that, but the profiteering of things like the um, Crusades, for example, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just really, really terrible because what people are uniformly afraid of if they don't have a means of coming to terms with it is death. And what religion offers is a you don't die button that they can press for you. Death will just be a change of address, right, as, as Larry has put it. Mm -hmm. And so that can be really captivating for people who have a. Uh, uh, matter of fact existential crisis and maybe even shorter lifespans particularly if you're like planning on dying before you're even 40 like you think to yourself i need to get on the program to where these very confident people can tell me that my soul will live on or that i will live on and i'll have this paradise how can i do that you know i'm coming to you from a place of ignorance and whether you believe it or not you are selling a false hope to people because you have something that you cannot demonstrate to be true and yet you're using it to harm other people. You're saying, well, I needed to go over to this land and reclaim it for our team and give me 10% of your resources and, and, and indoctrinate your children to continue to reinforce my teachings. It's so harmful. Um, and I can't think of anything more, more what's the right word, toxic uh, than encouraging people to harm each other for false hope. And and that has been uh, religion's modus operandi yeah. since the beginning. What do you think? Larry? Yeah, but even turning to religion at the end of your life uh, yeah. isn't, you know, conflict free. Voltaire Voltaire said on his deathbed when the priest was after him to accept God, he says, "Well, uh, you know, Henry, now the devil, excuse me, uh, he said this is no time to be making new enemies." <laughs> you, you still you still have uh, that that good bad conflict even in the supernatural uh, mm. uh theology true true you know the conflict resolution could have been resolved with satan a long time ago if god long was just like ago. hey you know what you are kind of pretty <laughs> in the garden, yeah. you're pretty good looking i made a pretty good looking angel okay you know what i i i've overreacted i'm sorry satan you you're you're a pretty good looking guy. I'm just gonna move on with the rest of my day. You know how you you're good. You're good. Everyone's good. I'm gonna remove your nose though, but you're pretty good. <laughs> oh, that's pretty messed up. That's pretty messed up. God, I yeah. need my nose. Okay. Um uh, we'll keep the horns though. Um mm -hmm. the the idea the entire if the entire premise of evil, which was Satan, is just, you know, a God's plan to further torment people in interest to drive more people to worship him or to test them. Or because he had some grand plan where people would have to go through an in insurmountable amount of suffering, right? Just before they can sit at his right hand side in God in, uh, in heaven and worship him, just so they can pat him on his back for the the punishment that he he gave them and for sins that are essentially rules of engagement that he wrote. I I I to just turn that all around and be like, yeah, but God is good. From a getting that from a Christian just really blows my mind because when you see right. the system for what it is. <clears throat> so startlingly such a, a fraud and i just yeah. wish that <clears throat> um you know when you see the magic trick you can't unsee it anymore right it's like yeah. when someone right does that hand yeah. trick and they say this is how i made a two of hearts show up it's like oh we'll do the trick again it's like i could but you're not going to enjoy it anymore it's like i wish we could do that for christians just so like hey look it's this. It's false hope. It's like, oh, well, it's well, yeah. It's ripping open the screen and showing Oz the man working the controls behind the curtain, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can tell them, but they just won't believe it because they're so scared, right? That uh, their soul will go to hell. You know mm. that. Uh, um, you know they they'll be punished in this lifetime for leaving the church. You know, mm. or, or you know that type of thing. Yeah, and I was in the be same shunned. Day. I was in the exact same boat too. If you told me back maybe 20 years ago, I would reject everything that you're telling me. However, 
what happened on my end was I had a better appreciation for what was true or not. Like I had a better system as I was learning my, my stuff in science and I actually paying attention, not just acing everything. Like I failed a lot of things and I had to realize I had to reassess how I understood and learn things. Then that, in that breakdown of my ego and understanding how the mm -hmm. scientific method work, I realized better explanations rather than having answers. I yes, realized was, how to get explanations and how to work. Yeah, so many people lose their faith in college. <laughs> as I did. As I, I, don't did. Blame them. I don't blame them. If it's a yeah. good college, it'll wreck it out of you. If it's a bad college, they'll just give you the, the degree at the end of the day. But yeah, Dredd, unless it's Trinity Western, right? Yeah. Right. There's some religious college, right? Where they well, reinforce yeah. the message. Yeah, every yeah, day. yeah. But my idea was um <laughs> through that process, I developed a better standard for wanting to know true things. And then when I looked back at the Bible, because I had an ethics class and I had to actually go back to the Bible and be like, wait a second, is any of these following the thing? I just aced my ethics test, but nothing in this Bible would make sense if I know ethics. Right. And I had a struggle because I wanted to believe the Bible, but the struggle came internally because now I realized that this was not satisfying a model that I knew was accurate a model of understanding for what I knew was accurate and how to actually be a better person. In fact, I was coming up with better ones than what I had with the Bible. It's like, ooh, Peter shouldn't have done that. Jesus should have said this. Oh, no. It came from inside of me. And I think truly what stimulates that is an appreciation for what's true and knowing what's false. And until you have that uh, that 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 methodology that you care about, you won't, yes. it won't matter if someone just comes up to you and says it's false because you don't have a way to verify what they say is true because you're also operating under false. Reliability. Answers. Yeah. You don't have a way to reliably verify. You need a criteria and you need to have appreciation for a good criteria. Cause even if you have a good criteria, you don't appreciate it if it doesn't tell you the, the answers that you want. So you need to have the appreciation for a good way to tell true things from falsehoods. And once you have that, and you appreciate it, <clears throat> you're not going to give it up because you understand its value, because you understand that it's a useful way to move through your life. And that's what you need to instill in people through education, through conversation. Uh, it can be done in a short period of time. It can be done over a lifelong journey. But that's how you get people to see the screen door at Oz or the magic trick. You the get screen door. To appreciate <laughs> the criteria for understanding yeah. true things and false things. That's how you get it. <laughs> Truth. Larry, Truth. we're nearing the end of the show. So how about we wrap up? Is that cool? Yeah, we uh need to go through dread location of his his works. What do you got? What's your works? What's my what what? Current quest what chaos. What's your what's your what's your works going on? What what would you love to plug before um, uh, next week? Oh, oh, oh uh well I'm still doing my weekly um uh, weekly sermons on uh, my YouTube channel, uh, Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. Yep, They're short little, uh, short little sermons, like not even, not even five minutes long. So they're little snippets there that I like to uh, have some fun with. Uh, for the playing FSM, around with the new FSM, background. So I, for the FSM Church. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, for right. Flying Spaghetti Monster, and of course they're just they're not specific to Flying Spaghetti Monster. They're just you know sort of general every everyday kind of good ways to look at life maybe uh the last one there i did was on the platinum rule mm. uh do unto others as they would have you do unto them and uh, that was a nice little segment i thought that mm. applies to everybody it doesn't it's not specific to pastafarians but uh sure. yeah yeah and if you like it subscribe nice cool um and i'll plug i'll probably coin the term here i probably did in last week's show but you got the platinum rule treat other people how they want to be treated you have the golden rule yep. treat people how you want to be treated has its limitations um and maybe a good understanding of when to do both like it's good to have one versus the other i don't like dogma either way like sometimes it might be good to do golden versus platinum just depending on the situation but the the true way how you figure out which one's which is in my opinion the wooden rule the wooden rule is don't be a jerk <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do that as a guide for yeah. how you follow all over the rules before that all right right all be right. be excellent to everyone ah uh, you don't have to be yeah be excellent to each other yeah 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 that's from um bill and ted isn't it yeah uh-huh there you yeah. go yeah. Yeah. just a reminder you can find this show on podcasts everywhere just search for digital free thought radio hour if you're watching this on youtube be sure to like and subscribe 
If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, and many people do, you can get help from re, uh, recoveringfromreligion.org. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com, where we keep all the archives of these shows, atheist songs, and many, many articles on the subject of atheism. My YouTube channel is at Doubter5, and you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to some other religion's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Don't sweat it until then, and enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week, um, next Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Say bye, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.